Are you one of God's chosen people? You know, God wants you to be one of his chosen people. In fact, he wants you to serve him forever, but especially right now, today, and in this life. And some of us have been told that, well, it's up to God who his chosen people will be. It's not up to us, so we really don't have any say in the matter. And we're going to look at the scriptures today to consider that, but from this perspective especially, that God wants you to be one of his chosen people. And he wants to work through you today as though it were the Bible days, because this is the Bible days. We are in the Bible days. Now, God chose some and not others. The Bible makes that very clear. It makes it clear. The Lord chose Abraham, but not his brothers Nahor and Haran. But didn't I just say that God wants everyone to be chosen? He does. So let's think about, and we'll turn and we'll look in a moment in the Scriptures to see what the Bible says. But he also chose Isaac and not Ishmael. And he chose Jacob and not Esau. Now, those couple particulars that I just described give passion to the debate about predestination. For how could a loving God choose the Jews and not the Edomites? Yet he did. In fact, in the scriptures, in, for example, 1 Chronicles 16, he calls Israel his chosen ones. He says, Jacob, Jacob, God's chosen ones. So there, Jacob is a name for the whole nation of Israel because Jacob had his name changed to Israel. From its first book, the Bible shows that God chose Israel. Within Israel, he made other selections. For example, among the 12 tribes, he chose one tribe to serve him in a very special way. Would anyone want to shout out? Maybe I'll say three, count to three. If you think you know which tribe to minister before him forever, shout it out, all right? A lot of people don't know the name of any tribe in Israel. But if you think you know the name of this tribe, say, say it. Which tribe did God choose to serve him forever? One, two, three. That was pretty good. I heard six tribes. <laughs> but the loudest, most people didn't say any tribe, but the loudest was Levi, and that's right. I mean, God chose, well, Judah for the king. We'll talk about that in a bit. But he chose the tribe of Levi. Now, <clears throat> the numbers one and three point to God because there's one God and three persons, the Trinity. And that makes it easy to remember that the priestly tribe of Levi descended from the third of Jacob's 12 sons. He was the third son, Levi. And the book of Leviticus is the third book in the Bible. So it sort of puts it together for the tribe of Levi is to represent God to the people. Within Levi, God chose three kids in one family. Their names were Moses and Miriam and Aaron to help deliver the nation, especially Moses. But then Moses' brother, Aaron, God chose to be the first high priest and Aaron's sons would be the priest for Israel forever. That was what God said. And we will look at some of that, for example, in the book of Numbers and the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 24. Now, God commanded the families of all the other tribes, like those of Reuben and Simeon and Judah, when they went into the promised land, God said, divide up the land amongst yourselves. So if you go and you look at the nation of Israel today and you see the land and the boundaries where the Jews actually possessed the land, they never took all the land that God wanted to give them, from the Nile River to the Euphrates. They never did that. The reason they didn't do it was because they didn't trust God. They were afraid. Just like 40 years before, they were afraid of the giants in the land. 
But the land that they did take, when God said, divide it up among the tribes, if you average each parcel that each tribe got, they got about a 1,000 square miles per tribe. A bit more than that. A 1,000 square miles. That's a nice amount of land. The tribe of Levi didn't get that land. They did not get a parcel. And God makes this explicit in the Bible. 